welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Ani and in today's video I want to talk about the Shadow and Bone Netflix series. So the series is really hyped right now, everybody's watching it, everybody is talking about it. So of course I had to make my own video to talk about it and tell you what I liked, what I didn't like and just overall what I thought about the show. So the show came out on Netflix about a week ago and is based on the books by Lee Bardugo. So for once there is the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I only have the first book in the trilogy and I actually got this absolutely stunning collector's edition some days ago because I, I just uh, couldn't resist. I mean, <laughs> look at this. Anyway, I read the trilogy about four years ago and I don't remember too much. I read them in German back then, I got them from the library and now I finally got myself the first book because the show has really put me in the mood to reread this. And then of course there is the Six of Crows duology, you will probably know that one. <laughs> so the show is an adaptation of the books and they combined the storyline of the Shadow and Bone trilogy with some of the characters from Six of Crows and I was really excited to watch the show. I mean the casting already looked so good just from looks alone, the actors all look perfect and the trailer was also really really cool. It looked like there was finally a good YA adaptation again. I mean we've had a ton of shitty ones over the years or like plain forgettable ones but this was something to really look forward to. I was really excited. But anyway now I am done with the show and I want to talk about it and I want to tell you guys what I liked, what I didn't like and if you've seen the show too then talk to me in the comments and tell me if you agree or disagree with my opinions. What did you like about the show? Who is your favorite character? All this. But I have to warn you this this will not be a spoiler free video so if you haven't watched the show yet and you maybe want to watch it proceed with caution. So the Shadow and Bone trilogy follows a young orphaned girl named Alina Starkova or in the English version she's named Alina Starkov but when I first read the trilogy I read them in German and she's actually named Alina Starkova there which is in my opinion much more correct because Russian or similar last names have uh, two forms. They have a male and a female form and the female form as far as I know usually ends on an A. So Starkov would be the male version and Starkova would be the female version. And this is actually also something that bothers me in the English version that she's called Alina Starkov because it's technically incorrect. So Alina Starkova or Starkov or however you like to call her is a young orphan girl and she serves as a cartographer in the Rafghan army together with her best friend Malian or Mal and Mal serves there as a track. And then there is the shadow foal separating the country of Ravka, which is like this vast region of darkness and shadows and there live these terrible monsters called Volkra in there. And from time to time people have to cross the fold in order to, for example, trade with the countries on the other side of it. And then one day Mal's unit gets chosen for a trip across the fold and since the two of them never have been apart, Alina finds a way to join his unit. And then, of course, when they are in the fold they get attacked by Volkra and then suddenly Alina bursts into this searing light and scares the Volkra away or maybe kills them. And well, after that everybody believes her to be the legendary Sun Summoner, a saint believed to have the power to summon light and eventually destroy the fold. So this is the very basic plot of the first book in the trilogy and also of the first episode in the show and then the show takes off from there and I'm not going to get into that because if you're here you've probably read the books and or seen the show. Instead I want to talk about my feelings while watching the show and what I liked and I'm gonna start with the casting because like I said in the beginning the casting was truly perfect. We have a very diverse cast so it becomes clear that the characters all come from different countries in this Grisha verse, in this world. By the way I absolutely love this world. We have this Russian inspired fantasy world which is really creative for once. It's something different. I absolutely love it. And we have countries with names like Ravka or Fjerda or Novyazem, which is my personal favorite. So um, casting was truly perfect and the characters all looked so good and especially the characters from Six of Crows in the show looked exactly like I'd imagined them when I read the books. Especially Cass, Inesh and Jasper. Those three were truly perfect and the characters are already very diverse in the books and I love how effortlessly they transferred this into the show. For example, Jasper is openly gay and it isn't like something that needs to be like mentioned specifically, just the way it is and it's perfect. By the way, I'm a bit sad he's gay because Jasper is He's my sweetheart. <laughs> so then of course we have the ships. In the Shadow and Bone trilogy there is this YA typical love triangle. So Mel and Alina have always been best friends and then of course at some point Mel develops feelings for her which in my opinion really destroys their friendship. And then there is the mysterious Darkling, General Kirigan, the leader of the Grisha army. And well, uh, as we all know, he turns out to be the villain and the one who actually created the fold hundreds of years ago. And what he actually plans is to expand the fold and rule over the entire nation. 
I mean, he is this typical villain. He is also mysterious and extremely good looking. And Ben Barnes, the actor who plays the Darkling in the show, is really the perfect choice for him. I have to say, while I read the books, I never liked the Darkling. Unpopular opinion I had, I never shipped the Darkling and Alina because it's just Ugh, I can't shit them. Once there's this huge age gap and then he's sort of creepy and of course he's the villain and I can't get behind this ship, then I'd rather be team uh, Malian, so Mal and Alina, but on the other hand I always thought their romance sort of destroyed their friendship and this is also what I fear might be happening on the show if we get a second season. So why can't a boy and a girl in YA books or series just be friends? Why does there always have to be a romance? It is really annoying me and I really hope they won't go too deep into that in the potential second season. Anyway, the Darkling and Alina on the show have this amazing chemistry. I mean, I still don't ship them because creepy, but when they interacted, it was so perfect. And the Darkling, he's so, oh my god, I fell in love with this villain. He may be on the list of my favorite villains now, which he wasn't before, because as I said in the books, the Darkling and I were like, no, no Darkling for me. But now, totally, like, oh my god, I love him so much. They even incorporated some of the quotes directly from the book into the show, which is something I always love. I mean, you can't do better than this. And there was the scene in the, I think, final episode, it may have been the seventh or the eighth, where he brings the infamous quote, fine, make me your villain. And the way he said that, oh my god, my heart skipped. It was perfect. I absolutely loved it. Then from the Six of Crows books, we of course also have a couple of ships. There are, for once, Kaz and Inesh. And I have to say, while they're the like the main ship, I never fully ship them. I always ship Inesh with Jasper, and then Jasper turned out to be gay. But uh, okay, <laughs> that's just how it goes sometimes. Anyway, still, these characters in the show, they had this amazing chemistry as well. They were always joking together, and you really had this feel of closeness. Anyway, in the book, they get together relatively quickly. In the series, it was only Kaz, Inesh, and Jasper. And Nina and Matthias were also in the the series but they had like their own storyline but in the final episode they already hinted at that they might meet in the <laughs> infamous potential second season <laughs> and the six of crows characters bring me directly to the next thing i want to talk about which is the atmosphere so the first scene in Catterdam, it was like i was there it was exactly like i'd imagined in the books the lighting the setting everything was truly perfect it was raining in the scene and we have the crow club and then I actually squealed when all those little details were revealed. For example, Kaz's cane and Jasper's revolvers and Inesh's daggers. And I'm really happy with how this adaptation turned out because I hadn't noticed until then, but I was really starved for some good adaptational content. Anyway, now I talked about everything I liked or loved on the show, but there were a few things that I, well, let's say didn't like. That sounds a little harsh because actually there wasn't really anything I didn't like on the show, but there were some things I thought that could have been done a bit better. For example, the pacing. I mean, we have eight episodes, that is not a lot, but sometimes I felt like the story was a little rushed. For example, in the books, the revelation of who the Darkling really is, it takes like forever and Alina finds out over the course of, I don't remember, if you if you remember then tell me in the comments. Anyway, in the show, the audience and Alina find out who General Kirigan truly is, I think, four episodes in. And this seemed like pretty rushed. It was like he was this mysterious, seemingly friendly guy before that and then suddenly we get to know who he really is and we get to know his story and it was like, Oh, oops, so where did this come from? For viewers who haven't read the books, it may have been a shock. I mean, it was a shock when we found out in the books, but in the books, I feel like it was prepared better beforehand. But another thing I couldn't fully get behind was how the relationship between Alina and the Darkling developed. Because at first, when he comes to take her away and take her to the little palace to be trained as a Grisha, she's like, oh, I don't want to go. I can't leave Mel behind. And he's this dark stranger and she actually hates them and she wants nothing to do with the Grisha. And then like three episodes later, they make out in his study. And this is like, even if we don't know at this point that he's hundreds of years old, he's still much older than her. And first off, this is a bit creepy. And then she's like, suddenly she turns into this lovesick person. And at first she hates everything about the Grisha life, but then suddenly she falls really hard for General Kirigan. And I knew they had to incorporate this into the story somehow, but it seemed a little unfitting to me. I mean, this may also be because I never was a fan of the ship, but I thought it was also a bit rushed. So eight episodes really weren't enough to fully draw out the story and go into more depth. But I have to say with the eight episodes this show had, they did pretty good. And there was of course the decision to mix Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows. And of course there had to be some changes because the characters from the two series don't ever meet in the books. 
In the show, they made it that way that the crows have to go looking for the sun summoner, and then they also have to cross the fold and eventually find Alina. But I have to say the changes they made actually did make sense and everything combined really well into this new big storyline on the show. I mean, it mostly still followed the Shadow and Bone storyline rather closely, but they added the Six of Crows part. Also, the ending leaves more than enough room for more. So as I've said before, there's this hint that Nina and the crows meet. And also we find out that the Darkling, surprise, isn't dead after all, but he comes walking out of the fold and the fold follows. So this was really creepy. And I mean, of course, everybody knew that he wasn't dead. This would have been way too easy, but this leaves so much room for more. And I am super excited to see where they go from there, what they make of it. So yeah, I've uh, took another look at my notes and I've seen that I've actually talked about everything that I wanted to talk about now. So as you saw, I really loved the show. It was very well done. The characters were perfect. There was great chemistry. They even incorporated some quotes and little important details from the books which was perfect and eight episodes simply weren't enough and I can't wait for the second season and it really pains me that we have to wait so long now but I have enough reading material to fill the wait because I just bought Rule of Wolves which is the sequel and conclusion to King of Scars the duology about Prince Nikolai and I can't wait to read this and then I'm also rereading The Language of Thorns at the moment because like I said the show has really put me in the mood again and I finally feel like reading some fantasy again and go back to this world because I absolutely love this world. And this is a collection of fairy tales from the Grishaverse and it's so gorgeously illustrated. It has this, like the illustrations, they grow from page to page. It's really cool. And I can read this one story at a time and they're all really clever and sort of dark. And if you don't know this book yet, I recommend it. If you like the Grishaverse and you want more content, then go read this book. <laughs> so this was all I have to say for today's video. And as always, if you liked it, then give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to my channel or to my book blog, Annie the Book Princess. I put a link to that down below in the description. As always, you can find all my book reviews and other stuff there. And go tell me in the comments if you've watched the show, what you liked, what you didn't like, like and all that comes to your mind. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again for my next one whenever this will be. Bye bye!